Okay, so this is a, uh, a standard Candy Color Computer 3. Um, it's got uh, a ROM pack here on the side that contains a DriveWire 3 ROM, and it's connected via a BitBanger cable, which I guess you really can't see, over to a, uh, a PC over here behind me that's running DriveWire 4. And uh, added a neat new trick to it tonight, and I thought I'd make a video to to show that in action. So, first let's get this guy booted up. Uh, as you can see, we're just booting drive uh, Nitrous 9 over drive wire here. And let's set up a couple things we need. And what we're going to do is play some MIDI files. And rather than a MIDI card or a MIDI device plugged into the Coco, we're going to use one of the virtual channels that DriveWire 4 provides to actually be the MIDI device. So I had to, had to tweak the driver a little bit, basically just change its name to be MIDI because uh, the only player I have seems to insist that's what it's called. Other than that, it's a standard, uh, just any one of the regular 15 channels of uh, data that you get with DriveWire 4 that you can use for all kinds of different things. And so we'll use MF Play, which seems to be, uh, I think this is the same player that uh, Brian was using there at the Coco Fest to play the music for us. So I think this is probably the one you want to use, I'm assuming. And we will start up the player. Just Stock player I found off RTSI, no changes needed there. And hopefully you can hear that we've got music. And where that's happening is over here. If you can make this out, this is uh, DriveWire 4 running on the PC here. And maybe you can see that it's detected some MIDI data there. And it's now passing that MIDI data on to the built-in sequencer synthesizer I have in the computer. I don't even really know what it is. In the future, I'd like to pass through that MIDI data and uh, pass it out to like an external keyboard or an external synthesizer. When I stop it, um, there is some latency problems, and I know that's always a problem with anything MIDI, especially when you're in a tight resources. Um, I'm not sure how much we can do about that, whether it can ever get to the point where it's good enough to really use for something professional or not. Uh, right now, there's actually some buffering going on on the server that's intentional for throughput purposes in a normal data situation that we can turn off. I also read that the built-in uh, Java uh, sequencer is uh, pretty bad with, with intermittent latency problems, so I'm going to play with that some. Uh, this file kind of shows the latency more. I think you can hear how it kind of stumbles every now and then. Remember, this Bitbanger cable is providing the drives, the clock, everything. So there are other things happening on the on the wire that may be causing some trouble as well. I know the clock doesn't sync every 60 seconds. Show you 
okay, one other thing we did, which uh, works a little bit differently, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull some data off a website using uh, the DriveWire 4 networking. And then I'm just going to pipe that right into the in device, which is a, a kind of suede device that assigns any free channel that there is out of the pool. And uh, we're just going to dump, well, I better type this right if I want it to work. This is a MIDI file, uh, a regular MIDI file, not one that's been processed and, and turned into the, the CMF format, which I think is a little different. But this is just a standard MIDI file you can find anywhere on the internet. We're going to just dump it to a, uh, a network port, and hopefully you can see this command here. This takes a little while while the Cocoa downloads the file from the internet and then dumps it right back out over the same cable to the uh, DriveWire server. It'd be interesting to see if... Oh, here we go. So you can see we're back at a prompt now and we can continue on our way. What that did is it took the entire object brought it to the Coco. The Coco then, using a, a redirection, sent it back to the server. Uh, the server detected that it was a MIDI file and sent it to the same sequencer. So I think that's about all we've got to share today. Uh, take it easy.